Future Judge Advocate General of the Navy, Rear Admiral Merlin Starring, was given less than 24 hours to review the 600-page Court of Inquiry report. In the course of my career as a Navy lawyer, I have been called upon to review and take actions upon uh, hundreds of investigations of various uh, degrees of importance and volume. This is the only instance in which a record of such an investigation has been withdrawn from me after I had been asked to review it and uh, not, uh, not been given an opportunity to complete my advice to the convening authority. As you know, it's a, a voluminous document. And one of the things that um, I initially had difficulty with, and still do, is the fact that the very first statement of fact that the court arrived at and presented was this. Available evidence combines to indicate the attack on liberty on 8 June was in fact a case of mistaken identity. Now that is the sort of thing in this record that I found great difficulty in supporting from the evidence that was included. I'm convinced that it was withdrawn from me in this instance because of my statement to Captain Boston that I was having serious problems with the evidence that was available to support the statements of fact. In the subsequent cover-up, the Israelis maintained that they thought the Liberty was the small Egyptian freighter, the al -Qusair. This is not credible. Not only was the Liberty flying a large American flag, but it was five times as large as the al -Qusair, and its profile was unique. It bore no resemblance whatsoever to the Egyptian ship. Our enemy wrote that um, it appeared that the uh, Johnson administration wanted to cover up the whole thing. They actually wanted to sink the ship so that Israel wouldn't be embarrassed. Admiral Kidd, uh, when he came aboard our ship to interview the survivors, uh, he got us in small groups, three or four or five sailors, and he would ask us questions. The first thing he did is uh, he took off these stars, laid them on the table, and said, "Listen, open up to me and talk to me, just like her. I'm just one of, just like you, one of you." So we did. We trusted him. We opened up with our hearts. We told him exactly the way we felt, what happened, what we saw. And when that was done, he put his stars back on, on his lapel. And he ordered us not to say anything to anybody, our families, friends, shipmates, anyone. If we did, we faced the possibility of a court-martial, penitentiary, or worse. And everyone knew what worse meant. Actually, he scared the death out of me. I didn't talk about the attack to anyone for almost 20 years. Not knowing why they did this and what, and not having their government back us then and now. It's, it's an open sore. It's, uh, it's, it's festering uh, to this day. It's not going away. I think it's important that we do have an investigation. I, I would never give up on that until I'm too old to come to these things. It needs to be done. And Pete Buecher from the Pueblo said he wouldn't even have gone if he could have known what really happened to us. All he knew was some piddly little thing he heard about on the news. In late 1991, Dwight Porter, who was ambassador to Lebanon during the 1967 war, told colonist Evans and Novak that immediately after the attack on the Liberty, the CIA station chief handed him intercepted messages between the Israeli war room and their planes. The pilots were given orders to attack the ship, and they replied immediately that it was an American ship. The Israeli headquarters responded, you have your orders, attack the ship. The pilots tried once again, but it's an American ship. We can see its flag. And headquarters insisted, you have your orders, attack it. And attack it they did, and the consequences are well known. So one of the things I found out was that uh, that had never been discovered before uh, was the fact that at the time the Liberty was attacked, the NSA also had an eavesdropping plane flying high above the scene of the action, 
It was an EC-121, and uh, during the entire course of the war, the U.S. Uh, had uh, eavesdropping planes going over the um, area, collecting signals, eavesdropping on what was going on below. And this plane was uh, flying right over the scene of the attack, and I talked to two of the crew members of the plane, and both of them agreed that the, what they heard were comments from both the pilots and the torpedo boat uh, uh, personnel uh, mentioning the U.S. flag. Uh, now that flies in the face of what the Israeli explanation says. The Israeli explanation says nobody on either the planes or the ships ever saw a U.S. flag. Evans and Novak got further confirmation of the Israeli attack from an American-born Israeli major, Seth Mintz, who was in the Israeli war room at the time of the attack. He told the reporters, quote, Everyone felt that it was an American ship and that it was the Liberty. There were comments about the markings, about the flag. Everybody in the room was convinced it was an American ship, unquote. Mintz told Evans and Novak that the Israelis were guilty of an outrage. True. But the American suppression of the truth was an equal outrage. The planes dispatched by the Saratoga had continued to the rescue. The Israelis would have been driven off. But Washington took the Israelis at their word. They said they had recognized their error and they apologized. And the attack had already stopped, they said but they were lying. The attack continued for another hour and 20 minutes, during which 25 more American sailors died and 110 more were wounded. All would have been spared if the American planes sent to help them had not been recalled by Washington. The point was the attack did take place. There were a lot of reasons that the Israelis would have wanted to hide things from the U.S. And that's why there is a need for investigation. Um, I mean, you're not going to take the, the word of somebody who was uh, the principal person who caused it. Uh, that'd be like uh, taking the word of a defendant in a, uh, in, a, in a shooting. Every one of the thousand odd clashes between Syria and Israel between 1948 and 1967 was examined by the UN Supervisory Commission, which found out that only a very, very few had been caused by the Syrians. A few dozen of the clashes were ambiguous, and all of the rest were caused by Israel. All of the rest were caused by Israel. All of the rest were caused by Israel. Well, there were many officers of many nations, and they all report the same thing. Could they all have been lying? Still, we no longer have to rely only on the U.N. documentation. Moshe Dayan, who commanded the Israeli forces in 1967 and had given the order to occupy the Golan, gave an interview to an Israeli journalist in 1976. The interview was kept secret until April 1997, when it was published in an Israeli newspaper. It has been authenticated by Israeli historians, and General Diane's daughter, Yael, a member of the Knesset, insisted that it be published. Why did he give the order to invade? Essentially, it was because of pressure from the would-be settlers in the Golan, who convinced Levi Eshkol, the Israeli Prime Minister, to occupy the heights and the fertile lands beyond. And when asked if that were all there was to it, Diane replied, I can tell you with absolute confidence that they were not thinking about security. They were thinking about the heist land. I saw them. I spoke with them. They didn't even try to hide their greed for that land. The best one is the one where they wanted to go on heights. And Johnson said, that's enough, that's enough. And they needed another day to get the goal on heights, which they still have, <laughs> which I didn't think you were supposed to do, take land from another country and keep it. If we could get the truth of the liberty out, 
that it would change history, I think, in this country. I cannot, absolutely can't see why our American newspapers and TV people have helped to cover this up, but not covering some of our stories. The Navy Board of Inquiry would not admit testimony about the jamming, the recall, the unmarked plane, the shooting of life rafts, and other material that we tried to present. They asked questions. We were allowed to answer those questions, period.